Hello everyone, it is time for a new video and today we're going to be talking about some polyamorous romance recommendations. I This video is mainly sparked by the fact that the Challengers movie just came out and I've seen everyone talk about the movie, talking about polyamorous books, and some people talking about it not in the best ways, you know, but I was just like, you know what? We're gonna talk about some polyamorous books that I love. I actually have quite a lot of them. And so I have two YA books and the rest are to me adult, very hot polyamorous romances. All of them are actual romances where, you know, it's an established um, thruple. <laughs> I do think all of them, maybe except for one, are three, three people. I think one of them is four people. And let's just get straight in. I actually really love these books. I love reading polyamorous books and I want to share it with you. And at the end, I think I will mention a few books that are on my TBR that I've heard amazing things about. And let's just get straight in. So I have my laptop here. And so let's talk about the two YA books first. And so the first one I have here is actually one of my favorite YA fantasy books. I have talked, I have started talking more about how I want to get back into fantasy lately. And this is a book that I actually read maybe like two years ago or something that just like ticked all my boxes. Like it worked for me, it worked for me so much. And I can't believe that this book doesn't get more hype because it's absolutely incredible. And I need to reread it. So I'm going to read you um, the first line on Goodreads, which says... A pansexual blood mage reluctantly teams up with an undead spirit to start a rebellion among the living and the dead. So this has like politics, palace, vibes, like royalty, again, the living and the dead, such cool magic. Obviously part of the romance is with the undead spirit and another part is with a princess. And also the like basically the main character has magic that is forbidden and she accidentally reveals it in front of the spirit. It is incredible. I know so many people who would love this and I need them to read it. You know, like this is, it kind of has like darker vibes, but I absolutely love it even as someone who doesn't necessarily like super dark things. Um, cause it's at the same time just like magical and fun and fast paced and addicting and oh my gosh, like please read this book and I need to buy a fucking copy so I can read it again because I feel like I listened to it on audio and I do not remember details and like that is just unacceptable so um that's that and the other YA one is The Waker Gang by Kate Ankrum and I don't think I'm really gonna describe this book because there is no way to describe it and this is actually another one that I listened to on audio that I need to buy a copy of <laughs> Um, especially because this actually is a mixed media book and I don't know how that looks because I haven't seen it. And so I do think if you can, reading it physically is the best way to read it. I don't remember, I probably liked the audiobook, but again, like I could not see like all the different things. And at the core of the story, we have Jack and August who have this very intense friendship and it deals with like a lot of mental health and it's a very like strange book but it just like hits you in the heart and someone in a review described it as like something in the direction of like tore their heart apart while at the same time like filled it or something like that <laughs> and that is the perfect way to describe this and any fun any book by Kay Ankrum like oh my gosh she is incredible I just talked about Icarus in one of my recent vlogs which is a very different book, but it gave me the same feelings. It is just so powerful, so intense, so unique. If you want like a very unique, interesting book, you need to read this. And so uh, that's all I'm going to say. I'm, I know it's not much, but just trust me, you need to pick it up and just dive into the story and let it consume you. And incredible. So actually, since I did mention the Challengers movie, I feel like the way that K. Ankrum's books feel makes me feel the same as Challengers, even though the, again, plot, very different, very specific, but the feelings, oh my god. I think if you're a K. Ankrum stan, you need to watch Challengers, and if you loved Challengers, you need to read K. Ankrum. Like, so now we're going to move into the adult books that are all very steamy, super fun, addicting, incredible. A lot of them, a lot of them are also novellas, so if that's another thing you're looking for, you are going to find it here. So I will actually mention the only physical book that I have, the only physical book that I have, which is actually a tragedy that I only have one. 
Um, but that is Treble by Rosie Adams. I have talked about Rosie Adams many times before. She's one of my favorite authors. I love her so much. There's literally not a single book that, I've, that I haven't loved by her. And I've read like 80% of them. And so this has a trope that multiple books in here that I'm going to mention have, which I absolutely love. I think that it's the perfect setup for a polyamorous romance, which is that we have a couple that's already established and they bring in a new person. And so this is MFF. And oh my gosh, so the couple in this book the already established one. They have such incredible communication. Uh, they date other people kind of casually outside of their relationship and they like communicate about it. It's fully consensual everything like um, but they've never been interested in the same person until now and so they start falling for the same person. They start like hanging out with her separately at first and then they you know slowly come together <laughs> and bro oh my god I adored this so just incredible again like the thing is a lot of the books actually that I'm going to talk about these authors just nail it so well that it's like while it's a short book and you know very like kind of smut driven it still feels like the relationships are so well established um you know they communicate they the characters feel real and whole and it's not just you know um so I just adored this and I actually already reread it, I think at least once, and I need to read it again. And it's literally just a hundred pages. So check this out. Also, this is a black love romance, as in all of the main characters are black. So that, that's another thing that you're looking for. You need to check this out. And you know what? I'm going to mention um, the other book that I have here that has the similar trope that I also adored. Um, that's also like just 90 pages, which is Sweet Heat by Lady Marie. And so this once again is MFF and an established an established couple. Uh, the heroine in here is just like craving to basically just give more love and attention to someone new besides her husband. And again, like I don't want to say more than this. I don't know if it's like enough. Um, but Again, these are short and there's not like a lot of plot <laughs> outside the romance, but so good. Once again, I felt like the communication was incredible and it just felt so natural, so good, so steamy, so fun, absolutely amazing. And if you have not read Lady Marie as well, she is another black love romance author, also on Kindle Unlimited, and I love her so much. Um, the next one is a little bit of a different thing, which is a historical romance, and that is My Lord, Lady, and Gentleman by Nicola Davidson. This, oh my god, I love Nicola Davidson. She writes very steamy, super fun, um, sex positive, queer historical romances. A lot of them also on Kindle Unlimited, and I love her so much as well. And in this one, the setup is basically one of the heroes, this is MMF, um, one of the heroes, um, we also actually have an established couple, they're married, and, <laughs> and one of them is a painter, the one outside of the marriage is a painter, and he paints like sensual portraits, and he paints the wife of the other hero, and let's just say things go on from there, and it is just so fun, it is, again, I loved the characters. I also need to reread this one. And it's just, you know, it takes a lot of skill to develop the characters well enough and then their dynamics so that they work all together. And I feel like all the all the authors that I all the books that I'm gonna mention in here uh absolutely kill it at that. The next one is actually a little bit different, as in we Basically, it is Two Rakes for Mrs. Sparkwell by Ava Lee, which is another historical romance. And I, I, we have basically, let me check the names, Rush and Jack. They are very close friends and they have always liked each other, but obviously it's complicated and um, uh, they like live in the same house because Jack works for Rush and so they like live in the same house. Uh, it's still obviously a queer relationship and so it's a little bit more complicated. They can't just get married and everything. So yeah, but they already are very close and love each other. 
And then we have Vivian, who basically is struggling because she, she does not want to get married. She does not want to be forced to get married. And so she decides that she needs to ruin her reputation so that no one wants to marry her. And so she asks uh, Rush for help. And then obviously she starts kind of seeing their relationship and that it's not just platonic. And they all join together. And it's just so good. It is so good. I loved this. Again, it was like a little bit of a different setup and it worked so well and I adored it. So the next book is um, a paranormal monster romance, which is inextricably tied by Evita Weiss. And I love Evita Weiss so much. I have talked about them many times before as well, but not in a while. And I need to reread this book so bad and I always say that I don't fully love monster romance like it's not the monster part it's generally not for me but I do love paranormal romance and so I just always read the monster romance as paranormal and I just kind of like you know make it look a little different in my head <laughs> and Aveda Vice just writes such amazing also just very like queer and fun and wonderful monster romances and they are just incredible. I again, I love paranormal romance and I need more like this. And so we have um, a romance between a gargoyle, a banshee and a night terror. And it is so cool. It is like it has that like kind of dangerous fun higher slightly higher stakes vibe we have harbinger and flint and flint is her bodyguard you know they feel pulled together but they don't fully want to succumb to the feelings <laughs> and they get uh kind of linked together and that then puts um agony into their life and i honestly have no idea how to describe like the monster elements entirely <laughs> and the whole thing but it is so good. I, um, again, felt like the bonds between them are so good. It feels just so... D the tension is delicious, okay? The tension is so good. If you like reading paranormal romance, you need to give this a try or, you know, any other Aveda Vice books. Um, I'm obsessed and I really need to reread and oh my gosh. So um, you need to check this out. Then I have uh, two books by Katrina Jackson. One of them is Looking, which is once again a established couple that adds a new um, woman into the mix. I absolutely adored this. And then I have Neighborly, which is also recently was released on audio and I think I want to listen to it to reread it. And this one, I <laughs> have to say, I have to say this is probably like one of the hottest books I've ever read in my life. So if that is what you're looking for, you need to read this. But still somehow Katrina Jackson manages to make the characters feel real. It is incredibly fun and romantic and just like so good. So, so, so good. <laughs> And this one is the one that has two couples, so we have four people, and um, mainly the heroines start, they move in next door and into like the same building, and so it's like, you know, not the, like the same house, but you know. And so they're, they like keep seeing each other, and so they keep pining for each other from afar. Uh, things go on from there, and like, I don't even know, like, I can't even, like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> this is just a very, very steamy, amazing uh, book. And Katrina Jackson is just such an incredible author. I love her so much. I need more people to read her books. So if you haven't, read these. Like, you need to read these, okay? Um, and we're nearing the end. Then I have a book that I also need more people to read, which is The Companion by E.E. E. Ottoman, which is kind of like a more romantic while still being steamy historical romance. We have another MFF romance and all of our main characters are queer and trans. We have our heroine, one of the heroines who comes into this small town because she's a writer and she needs kind of like a safe space to just like live and work in and the hero basically like lets her move into, I don't know if it's his house or it's got to be his, his house. And then we have the other heroine who lives in this town and she actually, I, I should say their names to make it easier. So Madeline moves into this town. Victor is the one who helps her and 
uh, Audrey is the one that already lives in the town. And so Audrey and Victor used to have a thing and so there's kind of like some pain between them and like unspoken things and all of that. And so, and then I am pretty sure Madeline and Audrey don't know each other yet. And so we have such del such a wonderful combination of like tropes and vibes in the whole thing where we kind of have Madeline and Victor having a friends to lovers romance, uh, Victor and Audrey having a second chance romance, and Audrey and Madeline having just like, you know, they just met and they um, are very attracted to each other. They really like each other and all of that. So it is so good. I feel like it, once again, the characters felt so well fleshed out. They were wonderful. The chemistry between them was so good. There was some angst again, like from the past and like all of those things. And it is just lovely and beautiful. If you also want to read books with trans representation that focus on the love and the joy and being safe and all of that, you need to read this. It is just wonderful. And uh, the cover is so pretty. I also just really want to buy this and reread it. And so definitely read this. And the last book that I have to recommend before I mention two books that I want to read is Give Me More by Sarah Kate. I love this series. Uh, this one is MMF where we once again have an established couple. The one outside of it is really good friends with them but they're not together and he ends up spending time with the heroine because uh, the other hero is away and um, things go on from there once again because it is once again like very steamy and fun. And I really like Sarah Kate's books. They're super fun and just like so easy to get into, so easy to get through and just fast paced and great and I really enjoyed this. It was fun. It uh, I liked the dynamic. Do you think what I'm gonna love even more is the one that's on my TBR which is Madame by Sarah, by Sarah Kate. I've been wanting to read this for ages. I don't know why I haven't. It is a little bit long and this is very highly anticipated because this series is all standalones but the characters you know are kind of like appear in there and um, uh, the heroine in this has been like quite a powerful character in the series and I can't wait to read about her but um, I don't. I just need to get over myself and I do think I'm gonna read it soon so this I think is supposed to be MFF and um, I don't really know anything about it, um, <laughs> but I am super excited for it. So that's that. And the other one is Harbor by Rebecca Weatherspoon, which I cannot believe I still haven't read. I have heard so many good things about this. And this one I is MF, MMF and I know that it's quite emotional because the main characters were I think like in two separate couples and they got cheated on with like two people who got in a car accident and they died in that accident and so it deals with this like very complicated grief and that's all that I know about it. <laughs> so I think this is gonna be like a very great combination of like steamy but also very emotional and romantic. And yeah, I probably have some other books on my TBR, but I do not have to talk for 10,000 years, so I will shut up now. But <laughs> um, let me know if you have any polyamorous romance recommendations, and let me know if you've seen Challengers. I would love to know. And yeah, if you made it this far in the video, leave a, leave a flower emoji down below. And thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I will see you soon in another video. Bye!